Chapter 2. Pendulums. Rent yourself out. Destructive pendulums. We are taught from childhood to obey the will of others, to perform our duties, serve our country, our family, the company we work for, a political party, the state, or even an idea. To serve anyone except ourselves. To varying degrees, everyone has a sense of duty, responsibility, necessity, and guilt. Everyone is ready to serve a group or organization in one way or another, be it family, a club, school, company, political party, the state, and so on. All these structures emerge and develop when a separate group of people begin to think and act in the same way. Then they are joined by others and the structure grows, gaining strength, forcing its members to follow the rules and eventually amassing the potential to gain control over large groups of society. On the material level, the structure consists of a group of people united by common goals and material objects such as buildings, furniture, equipment, machinery, technology, and so on. On an energetic level, however, a structure appears when a group of people think in the same way, as a result of which the parameters of their thought energy are identical. Their thought energy finally unites into a single current. When this happens, as if in the middle of an entire ocean of energy, a separate independent energy information structure is created which is referred to as an energy pendulum. Eventually the structure begins to live its own life and subjugate to its laws the very people who created it. The structure is referred to as a pendulum because the more people, adherents, that feed it with their energy, the more powerfully it sways. Every pendulum has its own characteristic beat frequency. For example, if you want to get a swing moving, you have to push it to a certain rhythm or frequency. This is called the resonant frequency. If the numbers of adherents decreases, the force of its swing is weakened. If it loses all its adherents, the pendulum will stop moving completely and thereby cease to exist as a separate entity. Examples of defunct pendulums are ancient pagan religions, stone tools, ancient weapons, outdated trends of fashion, and vinyl records. <laughs> In other words, all that once existed, but now no longer functions. You might be surprised that all the things in this list qualify as pendulums. Any structure whose particular features were created by collective thought energy represents a pendulum. Generally speaking, all living beings capable of radiating energy at a particular vibration will sooner or later form an energy pendulum. Examples of pendulums in nature are bacterial colonies, populations of living creatures, schools of fish, herds of animals, forests, prairies, anthills, etc. Essentially, any organized homogenous structure made up of living organisms can be a pendulum. Every living organism represents a single unit of energy, and so also can be considered an elementary pendulum. When a group of individual pendulums begin to sway in unison, a group pendulum is created which looms over its followers like a superstructure. The group pendulum exists as an independent entity and sets rules for its adherents to follow, partly to keep them together, but also to attract new ones. This type of entity is independent in the sense that it develops according to its own laws. Its adherents are unaware of the fact that they are acting in accordance with the laws of the pendulum and not their own will. For example, a bureaucratic apparatus develops as an independent structure irrespective of the will of its official individuals. Of course, an influential official is free to make their own decisions, but only to the extent that they do not contradict the laws of the system. Otherwise, that particular adherent will be rejected. Even people who represent individual pendulums are not always aware of their true motivations, energy vampires being one such example. Any pendulum is by its nature inherently destructive because it consumes the energy of its adherents and establishes power over them. The pendulum's destructive quality is clearly demonstrated by the fact that it attributes no meaning to the fate of each individual adherent. The purpose of the pendulum is only to get energy from its adherents, whether it is to their personal benefit or not. When a person comes under the influence of a system, they are forced to build their lives in accordance with its laws. Otherwise, the system will chew them up and spit them out. Once under the influence of a destructive pendulum, you can easily end up ruining your entire life, and as a rule, it is difficult to break free without suffering losses. If a person is lucky, they find their place within the system and feel at home there. 
The adherent gives their energy to the pendulum, which in turn provides the individual with an environment. If a follower rebels against the laws of the structure, the frequency of their thought energy ceases to be in harmony with the resonance frequency of the pendulum. Being deprived of essential energy, the pendulum either drives the maverick adherent out of the system or destroys them. If, however, a person has ended up a long way away from a lifeline favorable to their growth, life inside the structure of an alien pendulum can be as soulless as hard labor or just turn into a very sad existence. In this case, the pendulum is purely destructive to the adherent. Whether they like it or not, a person who falls under a pendulum's influence loses their own freedom, being forced to live by imposed laws and becoming a small cog in a big machine. That said, an individual can find themselves under the protectorship of a pendulum and achieve outstanding results. Napoleon, Hitler, Stalin, and other similar figures were all favorites of destructive pendulums. This does not mean that the pendulum was actually concerned for their personal well-being, for it exploited them to its own end. When Napoleon was asked whether he had ever been truly happy, he could count just a few days over his entire life. The pendulum uses sophisticated methods to lure new adherents, who fly to it like moths to a flame. How often people are deceived by the pendulum's advertising tricks and move far away from a potential happiness that was so close. Young men leave for the army and lose their lives. Students go to university learning in vain to master a profession that is not really for them. They find work that feels alien but is supposedly prestigious and end up drowning in a swamp of problems, or they join their lives with a stranger only to regret it later. The pendulum can hide its motives behind various well-meaning masks, and yet its activities can ruin the lives of its adherents. The greatest threat to the pendulum it poses to the individual is that it leads its victims away from other lifelines where they would be able to find happiness. These are the characteristic features of a destructive pendulum. A pendulum feeds on the energy of its adherents, which increases the power of its sway. A pendulum strives to attract as many followers as possible to source as much energy as possible. A pendulum makes a contradistinction between its group of adherents and all other groups. We are good and they are bad. We are better than they are, etc. A pendulum acts aggressively toward anyone who refuses to follow it, attempting to win them over, neutralize their position, or get rid of them. A pendulum hides behind masks and lofty ideas. It plays on people's feelings to justify its actions and attract as many adherents as possible. Essentially, the pendulum is an egregore, and yet the concept of egregore does not fully reflect the entire range of possible interactions between an individual and an energy-based information structure. Pendulums play a much greater role in people's lives than one might like to think. The following example illustrates how a pendulum consumes the energy of its adherents. Imagine a packed stadium at an intense football match. Passions are running high and the fans are raging with excitement. One player makes an unforgivable mistake which results in his team losing the game. The fans in the crowd focus a storm of anger at the culprit player, ready to tear him to pieces. Imagine what a huge mass of negative energy is focused on the unfortunate player. You would think that from such an attack of negative emotion, the player would die on the spot, but he remains alive and well, if not a little crushed by feelings of guilt. This is because the negative energy directed toward the player is absorbed by the pendulum. If this were not the case, then any individual becoming the object of a crowd's hate would lose their life and any idol would simply float above the ground. I am no judge of whether a pendulum is an animate entity or simply an energy form. Either way, the distinction does not affect the transurfing method. The most important thing is to be able to recognize a pendulum and avoid being drawn into its game unless you stand to benefit from the interaction. There is one identifying factor by which a destructive pendulum can always be recognized. It always competes with others similar to it in the battle for adherence. The pendulum has one goal, which is to attract as many supporters as possible to source as much energy as possible. The more aggressive a pendulum behaves in the battle for devotees, the more destructive it is, i.e. the more danger it is to the life of the individual. Some may object that charitable organizations exist for the protection of the environment and animals, etc., and question why this type of group should be considered destructive. 
These groups are destructive to the individual because whichever way you look at it, they still feed on a person's energy with no concern for that individual's happiness or well-being. Organizations like these call for compassion to others and yet remain indifferent to their own followers. If a person feels comfortable and genuinely happy working for such an organization, then they have probably found their vocation, and consequently, the pendulum is the place for them. However, it is also important to be honest with yourself and ask yourself whether you are not perhaps wearing the mask of the benefactor. Are you donating your energy and money for the good of others with true sincerity, or is being involved in charity just an attempt to feel a better person or look good? Destructive pendulums have trained people out of choosing their own destiny because if individuals retain enough independence to have the freedom to choose, it will be much harder for the pendulum to attract so many followers. Our mind is so used to the idea that our fate is our lot in life that we find it really difficult to believe that we can simply choose a destiny that is more to our liking. It is advantageous for pendulums to keep their adherents under control, so they invent all sorts of ways of manipulating them. The following examples show how this is done. Transurfing could also become a pendulum if someone turned it into a pseudo-religion, movement, or a school. Different pendulums are of course destructive to varying degrees. At worst, transurfing would be minimally destructive because it focuses exclusively on the well-being of the individual rather than a shared goal. Transurfing would be a very unusual pendulum with a community of individuals concerned solely with their own destiny. If you were to do some homework, what other types of pendulums would you consider constructive? I'm telling you all this in order to describe what it really means to choose your fate. So have patience, dear reader. Not all these ideas are easy to grasp, but as we go on, a clearer picture will emerge. The Battle of the Pendulums The main feature of a destructive pendulum is its aggressive impulse to destroy other pendulums in order to win over potential adherents. With this purpose, the pendulum works to turn its followers against the followers of other pendulums in the sense of, we are good and they are bad. People who get involved in this type of argument end up losing their way and striving towards spurious goals, which they mistakenly consider their own. This is the destructive nature of the pendulum. Fighting against the followers of other pendulums is totally futile and can destroy lives, one's own, and the lives of others. War is the most extreme manifestation of the battle between pendulums. Each pendulum uses various arguments to persuade its adherents to take up arms and the nature of the argument is specific to the historical epoch. The earliest, most primitive argument used was simply to order the followers to take something from the hands of others by force. As society became more civilized, the arguments became slightly more refined. One nation declares itself supreme, progressive, and the most developed with all the others less developed and somehow flawed. The lofty objective is to raise the underdeveloped nations to a higher level, using force if they resist. Metaphorically speaking, the contemporary conception of war is like a beehive hanging from a tree in the forest. The wild bees in the nest are busy making honey and raising their offspring. But then, a pendulum comes up to the nest and announces to its followers, Look! Wild bees! They are very dangerous and must be destroyed, or at least their hive must be destroyed. If you do not believe me, look! And the pendulum stirs up the nest by beating it with a stick. The bees fly out of the hive and start stinging the adherents. The pendulum then cries out triumphantly, See how aggressive they are? They must be annihilated. Whatever exculpatory slogans are used to justify war and revolution, in essence the motivation is the same. The battle for adherence. The form the battle takes may differ, but its one goal is to win over as many adherents as possible. New force is a vital necessity for the pendulum, for without it, the pendulum sway would stop entirely. The battle of the pendulums is an inevitable struggle for survival. Once the wars and revolutions are over, other less aggressive but nonetheless tough forms of battle continue, such as the battle for market control, competition between political parties, all kinds of marketing, advertising campaigns, ideological propaganda, and so on. Human society is totally based on pendulums, so all fields of activity are gripped with competition. The rivalry goes on at all levels, from public debate to competition between club teams and individuals. Things that are new, unusual, or strange always have a hard time carving out their niche, and not only because of inertia in people's thinking. 
The main reason for this is that it is not profitable for the old pendulums to support the appearance of a novice who would distract its devotees. For example, internal combustion engines which so contaminate the atmosphere of our cities could have been relegated to the past a long time ago. After all, a number of alternative, ecologically friendly engine models have long been developed. The problem is that they threaten the downfall of the oil corporation pendulums, and for the time being, these hold too strong a position to allow some inventor to wipe them from the stage. These monsters literally buy up the patents for new engine models and keep them secret at the same time declaring them to have low levels of efficiency. Implementing its structure on a material level, the pendulum strengthens its position via financial means, facilities, equipment, and of course human resources. The pendulum places its favorites at the top of the human pyramid. The favorites are made leaders at all levels, starting with low-level managers and continuing up to heads of state, and they are generally not required to have any particularly outstanding qualities. As a rule, those adherents become leaders whose qualities best fit with the structure of the pendulum. To the favorite, it might appear that he has achieved impressive results in his life solely on individual merit. To some extent, this may be true, but most of the work in promoting favorites is performed by the self-organizing structure of the pendulum. If a favorite's parameters fail to meet the requirements of the system, they will be ruthlessly eliminated. The pendulum battle is destructive to its followers because they think they are acting on personal conviction when in fact they are following the will of another entity. In the majority of cases, the personal conviction of the devotees is taken over by the pendulum. As soon as a person attunes to the pendulum's frequency, an interaction begins to take place between them on an energetic level. The frequency of the devotee's thought energy is stabilized and supported by the energy of the pendulum. A kind of lock-on takes place and the adherent is trapped in a feedback loop. The adherent radiates energy to the resonance frequency of the pendulum, which in turn feeds a little energy to the devotee, thereby maintaining its influence over them. On the material level, this is an everyday standard scenario. For example, the pendulum of a political party conducts an election campaign, attracts a new devotee, and gives them a little energy in the form of positive feelings like righteousness, satisfaction, dignity, and importance. The adherent thinks they are in control of the situation and still able to choose their affiliation, whereas, in truth, the devotee was chosen and control established over them, not the other way around. The adherent only appears to be acting according to their own will, when in fact it is a pendulum that is artificially and unnoticeably manipulating the will of the adherent. The adherent enters the pendulum's information field, socializes with like-minded others on important topics, and establishes an energetic connection with them, and in this way becomes consistently attuned to a certain vibration. Later, the adherent may begin to feel that the pendulum has not lived up to their expectations, and they begin to have doubts about their former idol. When this happens, the frequency of the adherent's thought energy falls out of the pendulum's loop. The tightness of the pendulum's grip varies depending on its power. In some cases, the devotee is simply allowed to leave. In other cases, the heretic may pay with his freedom or even his life. A pendulum gets a firm grip on the frequency of an adherent's thought energy by dominating it. It is like when you are humming a little tune to yourself, but become aware of some other loud music being played nearby. The loud music dominates your senses, making it extremely difficult to stay focused on your own tune. For the purposes of transurfing, it does not actually matter too much how interaction occurs on an energetic level between the pendulum and the devotee. We will examine the nature of the interaction using a simplified model. No one can explain precisely how something really happens, because at that level of questioning, one has to ask what is meant by really, and the questions and speculation continue with the infinite process of learning. This is not what we are interested in here, so we'll make do with simplified models and metaphors that serve our purpose, satisfied with the fact that we are at least capable of understanding some things. Now we will look at how pendulums manipulate their adherents. Puppet Strings Pendulums are very good at coercing their adherents to give up energy voluntarily. A large, powerful pendulum, for example, can force its adherents to act according to a certain set of rules. Weaker pendulums go about things slightly differently. When an individual lacks the power to force another to do something, they turn to other methods such as reasonable argument, persuasion, and promises. 
These are feebler methods unique to a human society that has divorced itself from the forces of nature. Sometimes pendulums will use these techniques as well, but they also have a much more powerful weapon at their disposal. Pendulums are energy beings, and so they function in accordance with the immutable laws of the universe. The individual gives their energy to the pendulum when their thought energy is radiating at the same resonance frequency. A person does not have to be consciously sending thoughts to benefit the pendulum. As you know, most human thought and action originates in the realm of the unconscious. The pendulums make use of this feature of the human psyche. They manage to get energy not only from their adherents, but also from their ardent opponents. You have probably already guessed how. Imagine a group of old ladies sitting on a bench criticizing the government. They are obviously not adherents of the government pendulum. They hate it for a number of reasons. However, what happens is that the old ladies criticize the government for being so inept, corrupt, cynical, and stupid, and in doing so, they emit intense thought energy at the frequency of the pendulum. It does not matter to the pendulum which side you rock it from. It can use both positive and negative energy, just as long as that energy is resonant with its own. The pendulum's main task is to engage people in any way possible in order to occupy their thoughts. With the advent of mass media, the pendulum's techniques have become more sophisticated, and a person can become highly dependent. You have probably noticed that news programs are usually dominated by bad news, evoking strong emotions, anxiety, fear, resentment, anger, and hatred. The task of the journalist and correspondence is to attract attention. The media, being pendulums themselves, stand in service to yet more powerful pendulums. Their declared aim is free access to all information, but their true singular goal is to attune people's thoughts and always possible to the desired frequency. One of the pendulum's favorite ways of gaining access to your energy is to throw you off balance. Once you have lost a sense of your own equilibrium, you start to wobble at the same frequency of the pendulum, thereby enabling it to sway more strongly. Let us say, for example, that prices have risen. You react negatively, becoming resentful, you complain, and exchange information with your friends. This is a natural and even proper response, but it is also exactly what the pendulum is expecting. You radiate negative energy into the world at the frequency of the pendulum. It receives the energy, swings harder, and the situation is aggravated. The strongest string the pendulum can pull you with is fear, the most ancient and powerful of all human emotions. It does not matter what exactly you are afraid of, if the fear is associated with any aspect of the pendulum, it will receive your energy. Anxiety and worry are weaker emotions, but still relatively effective puppet strings. These feelings are excellent at attuning thought energy to the frequency of a pendulum. If you are concerned about something, you find it hard to focus on anything else. The feeling of guilt is also one of the most extensive of channels through which the pendulum can pump your energy. Guilt is imposed on us from childhood, and it is a convenient method of manipulation. If you are guilty, you must do what I say. Guilt is hard to live with, and so people try to get rid of it either via punishment or righting the wrong they have done. Both imply submission, obedience, and a certain thought pattern. A sense of duty is a special type of guilt. To owe something means that you are in some way guilty, and therefore obliged to do something. As a result, the guilty, both the truly guilty and the falsely accused, wander around with their heads hung low, paying tribute to the pendulum in the form of energy. An induced, conditioned sense of guilt is the favorite weapon of any manipulator, and we will return to this theme later. It is also worth mentioning the various psychological complexes people have. In the case of an inferiority complex, the thoughts people have are, I'm not good looking. I have no skills or talents. I'm not intelligent or sharp enough. I don't know how to communicate with people. I'm not worthy. In the case of a guilt complex, the thoughts are, I have done something wrong. Everyone is judging me. I must carry my cross. In the warrior complex, the thoughts go along the line of, I have to be cool. I declare war on myself and all around me. I will fight for my place under the sun. I claim my power. The thoughts of someone with the truth lover complex go along the lines of, I'll prove at any cost that I am right and prove to others that they are wrong. These and other complexes are the personal keys to the energy of different individuals. The pendulum strikes a chord and begins intensely draining that person's energy. 
The list of strings the pendulum uses to control its puppets goes on. Justice, pride, ambition, honor, love, hate, greed, generosity, curiosity, interest, hunger, and other feelings and needs. Feelings and interests allow a person's thought to be directed in a certain way. If a theme evokes neither interest nor emotion, then it is very difficult to focus on. Pendulums wound a person's feelings or play on their needs in order to capture a flow of thought energy. As a rule, people react in uniform ways to external negative stimulus. Bad news evokes discontent. Worrying news evokes anxiety and fear. Insult evokes animosity, etc. Habits also serve as a trigger for the clamping mechanism, such as the habit of getting irritated or anxious over nothing, responding to provocation, and responding negatively to negative stimulus in general. A person can be aware of the fact that the negative thoughts and actions lead to no good, but continue to make the same old mistakes out of habit. Habits often create problems and cause a person to act ineffectively, and yet it is difficult to get rid of them. Old habits are an illusion of comfort. People have more trust in things that are long familiar. Everything that is new causes some concern. The old is familiar and has already been tested through experience. It is like the old chair in which you sit down to relax after work. Maybe a new one would be more convenient, but the old one is still more comfortable. Comfort is characterized by notions such as convenience, trust, positive experience, and predictability. The new possess these qualities to a much lesser degree, so it takes time for a new habit to become an old habit. So we have looked at the methods pendulums use to influence people. The question arises as to whether a person can escape the influence of a pendulum, and we will talk about ways of freeing oneself from the association with a pendulum later on. Sometimes a person will openly take a stand against a pendulum that has been controlling them, but the individual is always defeated because their position is so isolated. No one individual can change anything. If a person has escaped the grip of obligation and entered into a battle with a pendulum, they will only waste their energy, at best being thrown out of the system, and at worst, being more aggressively squashed. An adherent that takes it upon themselves to break the rules established by a pendulum may find themselves beyond the law. On the surface of things, it looks as if the former adherent is being punished for their protest, but in actual fact, punishment is delivered because the adherent is no longer submissive enough to continue being a source of energy. We say that a fault confessed is half redressed because a person who has acknowledged their guilt is willing to subjugate themselves to the power of a pendulum. The pendulum is not interested in the adherent's remorse for their actions. It is only interested in restoring lost control. A pendulum will instantly become kinder if you allow it to manipulate you. If the accused refuses to repent, they can be got rid of because nothing more can be gained from them. If they do repent, the pendulum's true motives are usually veiled behind moral principles, saying that a person who has shown remorse cannot be a villain after all. You can easily differentiate between true moral principles and the hidden interests of the system if you keep in mind what the pendulum really represents and what its true goals are. You get what you do not want. As illustrated above, a pendulum can be powered both by its supporters and its opponents. Loss of energy on behalf of an adherent is just half the story. If a pendulum is sufficiently destructive, it can damage a person's welfare and future. Everyone is confronted with negative information or a challenging event at some time or another. Bad news and unfortunate events are provocations on the part of the pendulum. People obviously do not want to have this negativity in their lives, but generally speaking, they always respond in one of two ways. If the information they receive is not too hurtful, they let it go and it is quickly forgotten. If the provocative information is annoying or frightening, i.e. touches a chord in a person's soul, then their mental energy is captured in the pendulum's loop and the person is attuned to the resonance frequency. Events then unfold fairly predictably. The person gets angry, worried and afraid, expresses their upset in an agitated fashion, and in general, actively radiates energy at the frequency of the destructive pendulum. Not all the negative energy is harvested by the pendulum. Some of it radiates out to sectors in the alternative space that correspond to the quality of the person's thought energy, which facilitates a shift to a lifeline where what the person would rather avoid 
is to be found in excess. If you remember, when a person's thought energy is attuned to a certain frequency, they shift to a corresponding lifeline. A pendulum ensnares a person's thought energy, holding it at a certain frequency. This is what is so destructive about the role of a pendulum. For example, generally we let information about accidents and disasters pass us by. If we were not directly affected, why upset ourselves unnecessarily? As a rule, when you hear the news, a disaster is taking place somewhere in the world, but you are on a lifeline where you play the role of witness rather than victim. The line on which you are the victim is somewhere further away. Conversely, if you allow yourself to take on board information about disaster and misfortune and discuss it with your friends, it is quite possible that you will soon shift to a lifeline where you may well end up in the role of the victim. The stronger your desire to avoid something, the more likely it is that you will encounter it. To actively fight against what you do not want in your life is to make every effort to ensure that it is present in your life. You do not have to take any specific action to shift onto undesired lifelines. It is enough to think negative thoughts and then fertilize them with emotion. When you do not want there to be bad weather, you think about how much you dislike rain. Noisy neighbors wear you down and you end up arguing with them all the time or silently hating them. You are afraid of something and the fact greatly concerns you, or you have had enough of your present job and savor your dislike for it. Everywhere you are pursued by exactly the very thing you do not want, that you fear, hate, or despise. There may be other things that you would also like to avoid, but because you are not investing any negative emotion into them, they do not appear into your life. Once you let the thing you do not want into your life, associate feelings of hostility with it and indulge in those feelings, it will instantly become a physical reality within your life layer. The only way to eliminate the things you do not want from your life is to break free from the influence of the pendulum that has seized on your thought energy and from then on, avoid responding to its provocation or getting pulled into its game. You can free yourself from a pendulum's influence in two ways, by defeating it or by stopping its sway. We will look more closely at how this can be done below. Defeating the Pendulum Trying to battle with a pendulum is futile. As was explained above, when you battle with a pendulum, you just end up supplying it with energy. The first and most important condition for successfully defeating a pendulum is to refuse to get into conflict with it. Firstly, the more actively you try to fight off pendulums that get you down, the more they will pressure you. You can repeat endlessly. Leave me alone, get away from me, and think you are fighting them off, but actually you are just providing them with energy, making them cling to you even more. Secondly, you do not have the right to judge or change anything. Everything you see and experience should be accepted as if they were paintings on display, whether you like them or not. There may be many paintings in an exhibition that are not to your taste, but it would never occur to you to demand that they be removed from the exhibition room. Once you have recognized the pendulum's right to exist, you also have the right to leave it behind, remaining free of its influence. The main thing is not to fight it, judge it, get angry, or lose your self-control because by doing so, you agree to play the game. The pendulum should be calmly taken for granted as a necessary evil and left at that. Any position of opposition supplies the pendulum with energy. Before you can fully understand what it means to choose, you have to know how to decline. Most people have a vague idea of what they do want, but know exactly what they do not want. In an effort to get rid of things or events that they do not want in their life, people act in a manner that has the opposite effect. To decline something, you have to first accept its existence. The word accept in this context does not mean to embrace something and let it into your personal space. It means simply to recognize its right of existence and then pass by indifferently. To accept and let go of something means to consider the meaning of something and let it pass, waving goodbye as it leaves. This is much more effective than letting something into your personal space, becoming attached to something, and then trying to oppose it. When you think about the things you do not want, you attract them further into your life. Imagine a person who detests apples. Rather than simply paying them no attention, it irritates the person that apples exist at all. On a material level, they get annoyed every time they see an apple and openly express their disgust. On an energetic level, the person may as well be hungrily pouncing on apples. 
stuffing their mouth and chomping loudly, screaming about how much they hate apples, stuffing their pockets only to be sick, and once again complain about how they just cannot stomach apples. What the person does not realize is that they could simply delete apples from their experience of life. It does not matter whether you love or hate. If your thoughts are latched onto the object of your emotions, your thought energy will be attuned to a certain frequency and you will end up caught by a pendulum and transferred to a corresponding lifeline where the object of your fixation is present in abundance. If you want to eradicate something from your life, all you have to do is stop thinking about it. Pass it by with indifference and it will disappear. To eliminate something from your life, ignore it. Do not avoid it. There is a difference. When you avoid something, it means you have let it into your personal space, but are now actively trying to get rid of it. To ignore something means not to react to it, and consequently, not to experience its presence in your space. Imagine that you are a radio. If your day-to-day -day life is like waking up every day listening to a radio program, that you hate all you have to do is tune into a different frequency. You might think that you can protect yourself from unwanted pendulums by putting up iron boundaries between yourself and the world, but this is an illusion. Putting on protective armor is like saying, I'm a blank wall. I see nothing. I hear nothing. I do not know anything. I won't talk to anyone. I am unavailable. It requires a huge amount of ener energy to support this kind of protective field. A person who deliberately isolates themselves from the world will find themselves in a constant state of tension. Aside from that, the energy of their protective field will be vibrating at the same frequency as the pendulum against which their defense is directed. This is exactly what the pendulum wants. The pendulum does not care whether you provide it with your energy willingly or not. True protection from a pendulum is to be found in emptiness. If I am empty, there is nothing for the pendulum to hook into. There is no point in playing a game with a pendulum or trying to protect yourself from it if it can simply be ignored. When you can ignore the pendulum, its energy will pass you by, dissipating into space without causing you any harm. Your pendulum cannot push your buttons or upset you if you are empty in relationship to it. The pendulum's principal objective is to attract as many adherents as possible and reap their energy. If you ignore the pendulum, it will leave you alone and switch its focus to others who can be drawn into the game and attuned to the necessary resonance frequency. A basic example of this would be a dog that starts following you and barking loudly. If you turn round to face the dog, it will bark even louder, and yet if you take it seriously and start trying to dodge it or fight it, the dog will follow you for a long time just because it wants someone to lock horns with. If you ignore the dog from the outset, it will simply switch its attention to someone else and will not be at all offended that you paid it no attention. The dog is too absorbed in its goal of sourcing energy to think about anything else. The dog is a metaphor. It could be a person or a troublemaker of some kind. The principle would be the same. If someone is getting to you, see whether the model of the destructive pendulum fits that person. It will probably be a perfect match. If you cannot deal with a situation, choose to not to react to provocation. Ignore the person totally because whilst they are getting your energy, they will not leave you alone. When you get into a conflict with someone or hate them in passive silence, you are directly giving them your energy. To stop giving away your energy means to stop thinking about them altogether, to erase them from your mind. When you can say to yourself, they're not worth it, and really mean it, that person will disappear from your life. We often come across situations, however, where it is not that easy to ignore the pendulum. For example, if your boss demands something from you, an outright refusal or open defense of yourself would entail a loss of energy because both approaches amount to fighting the pendulum. You can, however, act as if you are willing to play the pendulum's game as long as you remain aware of the fact that you are just pretending. Imagine a heavily built burly man was to come at you with a sledgehammer and take a blow at you. If you react as if you are totally unperturbed, neither going to defend yourself nor to attack him, you could calmly step aside and observe the man take a sledgehammer and hack down into the empty space beside you. When you behave in this calm and unperturbed manner, the pendulum cannot hook into you and instead falls past you into empty space. The same principle is central to certain martial arts like Aikido. In Aikido, when one player makes an attack, the opponent defends by taking the other player by the arm and moving it in the direction of the attack as if casually seeing them on their way. 
without having to exert any force, the defending player sends their opponent flying in the direction of the original attack. The secret lies in not trying to block the attack. The players learn to accept the momentum of the attack and to move with the other player in this direction for a while before letting go. The energy of the attack is spent in empty space because there is nothing to catch hold of. The technique of the gentle dodge lies in responding with acceptance when the pendulum makes its first blow and then diplomatically stepping back or subtly directing the movement in the direction that suits you. For example, imagine your boss is stressed and heaps a pile of work on you demanding that it be done exactly in the way he thinks best. You know that the work would be better done differently or maybe the work does not ordinarily come within your, your responsibilities. If you object, argue, or defend yourself, your boss will simply demand that you accept his authority and do what he says. After all, he has made a decision and you are defying him. Do the opposite. Listen carefully and agree with everything he says. This allows the pendulum to discharge its first impulsive surge of energy. Then, start carefully discussing the details of the job. By now, you will have accepted your boss's energy and be radiating at his frequency. Because it has not been met with any opposition, the energy of your boss's initial approach will gradually subside. It is not advisable to tell your boss that you know better how the job should be done. Neither is it advisable to refuse to do the job or to get into an argument. It is much more diplomatic to ask for his advice on how he thinks the job could be done most efficiently or how perhaps another employee could do it more effectively. By doing this, you are swinging along with the pendulum, but you are doing it consciously from the position of the observer without being caught up in the game. The pendulum, on the other hand, continues to swing completely absorbed by its own game. In the game, the pendulum is the one who makes the decisions. The others agree with it or consult it for advice. If you try out this approach, you will see that energy which was previously directed at you will be redirected towards a colleague or other potential solution to a problem. For you personally, the pendulum will have been defeated. Stopping a pendulum. There are some situations where the pendulum cannot be defeated, which means it cannot be ignored or escaped. I had a friend once who was a really nice, kind-hearted guy, as well as being gifted with incredible physical strength. Late one evening, we were traveling in a tram and spotted a group of bullies looking for trouble. In other words, a really destructive pendulum. There were quite a few of them, and they were feeding each other with negative energy, convinced of their own invulnerability. As a rule, this type of group needs to be constantly bullying someone who will react to their provocation in order to increase their energy level. The men in the group started picking on my friend, probably because the kind and peaceful expression on his face suggested he was easy prey. They tried in any way they could to pick a fight by insulting and taunting him. However, my friend, my friend remained silent and refused to be provoked. In other words, he was trying to defeat the pendulum. I decided not to get involved because I knew he had nothing to fear, whereas the thugs were really risking it. Finally, my friend could not take it any longer and got up from his seat and headed for the exit. The most brazen adherent blocked his way. Then my friend, who was by now totally cornered, grabbed the punk by the scruff on the neck and de delivered a powerful blow to his head. The victim's face was smashed to a pulp. The remaining toughies froze with fear and amazement. My friend turned to grab the next one, who in a trembling voice mumbled, That's enough, man, stop! The energy of the pendulum had been instantly dispersed, and its adherents, who were very taken aback, edged slowly away from him, finally tumbling out of the tram. Of course, people like my friend, who can stand up for themselves, are lucky. But what do you do if you are not like that? If there is nowhere to retreat to, you can stop the pendulum's swing by doing something extraordinary that no one would ever expect. Somebody told me a story once about a man who was cornered by a pack of fearless street gang members. He was about to get beaten up when he turned to the gang leader with an insane stare and said, What would you like me to break first, your jaw or your nose? The question clearly did not fit with the usual script and the gang leader was taken aback for a moment. Then, with unhealthy enthusiasm, the man cried, Or maybe I'll just tear your ear off. 
And with that, he grabbed the gang leader by the ear, who let, who let out an agonizing cry. The entire scenario that the gang was used to playing out had gone awry. The gang leader was no longer thinking about beating anybody up. His only concern was how to save his ear from the madman's grip. The gang let the man go, assuming he was a psychiatric patient and he escaped a fatal beating. If you ever find yourself in a situation that you know will unfold according to a set script, do something surprising. It does not matter what you do as long as it is something that does not fit with the standard script. This will stop the pendulum swing. As long as you are acting out a prepared script, you are effectively agreeing to play by the pendulum's rules and give away your energy at the resonance frequency. If, however, the vibrational frequency of your energy differs significantly from that of the pendulum, dissonance will be created which will disturb the pendulum's beat. At the same time, it is not worth looking for trouble if you are dealing with a pendulum that has nothing to lose. If you are mugged by a person who is desperate for money, it is better to hand over your wallet right away. Some people even carry a 10 pound note with them just in case they end up in a similar situation. If the robber is a drug addict or mentally ill, even a martial arts expert could end up losing their life. Obviously, it is better to have no contact at all with types like this, just as you would avoid a rabid dog. If things were to suddenly go wrong, it could end in a tragic and yet absurd death. A sense of humor and strong imagination can be very helpful to you if you want to stop a pendulum swing because they can help you transform your irritation into a game. For example, imagine that you are being tormented by the crush of a crowd of people on the street or in public transport. Everyone is rushing in the opposite direction, making it difficult for you to make your way. Now imagine that you are in Antarctica and all the people around you are actually penguins waddling, fussing, and pottering about in their own funny way. Imagine that you are a penguin too, holding this image in your mind, the people who had seemed so irritating just a few moments ago will appear more pleasant, even evoking your curiosity. Of course, it is difficult to control yourself at moments when what you really want to do is vent your anger and have a good rant. At these times, it is hardest of all to remember that a pendulum is behind it all, trying to incite a response so that it can draw on your energy. Do not respond to provocation. The pendulum is like a vampire that exploits the anesthetic of your habit of responding negatively. Even now, despite having read these lines, you could express your irritation if you were distracted by an unwanted telephone call. If you set yourself the goal of remembering until it becomes habit, you will gradually work up immunity to the provocation of pendulums. You will probably have noticed how, when you respond to a disappointing situation with irritation, displeasure, or other negative emotion, the situation escalates in the same spirit or other things start to go wrong too. This is the pendulum swinging higher and higher. If you react, you end up being the one to push it higher. It is more effective to act in the opposite manner, either not reacting at all or reacting in an abnormal way. For example, if when you find yourself in an unpleasant situation, you respond with false enthusiasm or wacky delight, the pendulum swing will be brought to rest and you will see that the provocation stops with it. Earlier we said that the habit of reacting negatively to unpleasant circumstances triggers the pendulum's mechanism for capturing thought energy. This habit will fade if you decide to play your own game, in which you deliberately substitute negative emotion with positive emotion, confidence for fear, enthusiasm for gloom, indifference for resentment, joy for irritation. Try reacting inappropriately to small nuisances. You have nothing to lose. It might seem a silly game to play, but the pendulum will have no chance. The game style only seems silly because pendulums have trained us to exclusively play the games that are to benefit them. You can experiment with forcing the pendulum to play your game. You will enjoy it and be surprised to discover what a powerful technique it is. The working principle is this. When you radiate thought energy at a different frequency to the pendulum's resonance frequency, you are in dissonance with the pendulum. The dissonance stills the pendulum's sway in relationship to your personal energy the result being that the pendulum leaves you in peace. There is another interesting method aimed at gently bringing a pendulum to rest. If someone is getting to you or causing you a problem, try and work out what that person is missing and what they need. It could be health, confidence, or peace of mind. If you think about it, these are the three things we all need to feel fulfilled. 
Ask yourself what the person you are finding so challenging might really need at that moment. For example, if your boss shouts at you, maybe they are tired or having problems at home, and what they really need is a little peace of mind. Imagine your boss relaxing in a comfortable armchair watching the television, sitting beside an open fire, fishing by a river, or having a beer with friends. Perhaps you know of something else your boss likes to do. It may be that your boss is being pressured to take on more responsibility and is afraid of doing so. Perhaps what he needs is confidence. Imagine your boss skiing confidently, driving around in a sports car, or being the center of attention at a party. Your boss might be in some kind of pain. Imagine him feeling happy and fresh, swimming in the sea, riding a bicycle, or playing football. Of course, it is better to imagine them doing what they specifically like to do in their free time, but you do not have to guess. It is enough to simply imagine the person feeling content and happy. What is really happening in a situation like this where your boss suddenly appears on the scene with a problem, or could it be someone else like a mugger, try to instantly distract yourself from whatever the problem is. That way, you avoid putting your head into the noose that locks your thoughts into a certain frequency from the very outset. Now imagine this person receiving exactly what they need. What does a robber need? To eat, drink, get high? Visualize an image of the person's fulfillment. If you are successful, you can consider the problem solved. After all, the pendulum does not swing randomly. Something specific shifts it out of balance, causing it to start swaying. Consciously or unconsciously, the pendulum is seeking for one thing that will restore its balance. The energy of your thoughts set to a certain positive frequency will do that, at least indirectly, and the pendulum will instantly substitute its aggression with goodwill as a result. If this is hard to believe, test out the technique for yourself. A pendulum person approaches you with a problem which you solve, not in an obvious way, but on an energetic level. The technique is based on the principle that stops a pendulum. You give the pendulum your energy, but only a tiny piece of it in comparison to the amount of energy you could have lost had you been drawn into the pendulum's game. Besides that, you also have done a good deed by helping someone in need, if only for a short time. The interesting thing is that this person will adopt a friendlier attitude towards you, even though they may never guess why they feel so comfortable in your company. That can be your secret. The same technique can be successfully applied in cases where you need something from someone who is absorbed in their own problems and not in the mood to collaborate. If, for example, you need an official signature on a document and you suspect they might be ill-disposed toward you, try treating them to a healthy dose of visualization and you will find that they will be quite amenable. The last question is where all the energy goes when a pendulum is brought to rest. The answer is that the energy comes to you. Having coped with a problem once, you become stronger. The next time you try to solve a problem using this technique, it will not be as difficult. Is this not always the way? Fighting a pendulum head on only leads to a loss of energy, which is absorbed by the pendulum that created it. Psychologists and psychotherapists are well acquainted with equivalent practices of defeating or stopping a pendulum. In this sense, the techniques described here are nothing new. However, they will be of value to anyone unfamiliar with practical psychology and give a clear understanding of how and why psychological protection is so effective. Simple solutions to complex problems. Another practical value of these techniques for defeating or stopping a pendulum is acquiring the ability to solve all kinds of problems, complicated situations in your personal life, conflict, unfavorable circumstances, or simply a set task. There are always simple solutions to complex problems. The key to solving a problem always lies somewhere on the surface. The question is how to spot it. The pendulum that creates the problem obscures your vision, making it harder to find the key. The goal of a destructive pendulum is always to feed on your energy. To do this, it has to attune the vibration of your thought energy to the frequency of the problem and keep it there. This is easy to do if you are convinced that the problem is complex. If you accept the game rules, the pendulum will take you by the hand and lead you into an intricate labyrinth. Only later will you look back in hindsight and see how easily the mystery could have been solved. If you play on someone's complexes by scaring, worrying, or confusing them, they will take the bait and readily agree how complicated the problem is. 
You do not even have to scare a person to achieve the same effect. Most people will agree that there are no easy solutions to the majority of their problems. We are all constantly confronted with difficulties of some kind over the course of our lives, especially when we face something new or unfamiliar. Approaching problems with anxiety or even a reverential fear is for most people a deeply rooted habit. When weighing up their ability to deal with a problem, most people verge on the side of self-doubt. Consequently, all this anxiety is an excellent puppet string. A pendulum can act via its adherence, i.e. people who are connected with a particular problem as well as non-living objects. The pendulum holds a person's thought energy at a certain frequency, sucking their energy whilst they carry the burden of the problem. You might think that focusing on the problem would help you to concentrate on finding a solution to it, and yet the opposite happens. It actually hinders you from finding a solution. The pendulum focuses our thinking on a very narrow sector of the informational field. As a result, a person thinks and acts within the limits of a narrow corridor, unable to see the bigger picture or perceive the solution which may well lie outside that sector of the information field. Unusual or intuitive solutions often present themselves when you free yourself from the pendulum and are able to think in a different way. The secret of genius lies in remaining free from the influence of pendulums. While the thought energy of most people is held at certain frequencies by pendulums, the thought energy of a genius is free to attune itself to different frequencies and move into unexplored areas of the information field. The way to avoid getting caught in the pendulum snare is to keep whatever problem you are dealing with in perspective and remain aware of the pendulum's intent to trick you into playing its game. Rent yourself out. Be detached. Try looking at the situation as if you had no emotional attachment to it. Act as you normally would, but remain observant. Don't play the game. Remember that the pendulum wants to take you by the hand and lead you into a complex labyrinth. Do not let the problem get a hold of you, scare, worry, or confuse you. Just remember that there is always a straightforward solution to every problem. Do not accept the complicated interpretation projected by the pendulum. If you are confronted with a problem or tricky situation, be aware of your attitude towards it. Even though the problem may stir up feelings of confusion, fear, resentment, despair, and so on, it is important to change your initial attitude to the exact opposite because then the problem will either disappear by itself or you will quickly find a simple solution to it. Despite the stereotypes and habits you have already adopted, try to regard any problems you encounter as just another part of the road you are walking along, like any other aspect of it, rather than as obstacles that must be overcome. Do not take the problem on board so that it occupies your inner space. Be empty to the problem. If you have to solve a challenging problem, remember that you do not have to rely solely on logical reasoning. Your subconscious is directly linked to the information field where the solution to any potential problem already exists. Relax. Release any fear or anxiety you may have been experiencing in connection with the issue. Confident in the knowledge that the solution already exists, let go. Quiet the chatter of the mind and contemplate the nature of emptiness. It is very likely that the solution will come to you instantly and it will probably be very simple. If this, if this does not work, do not give up returning immediately to the rational thinking process. Try the exercise again. You will probably find that it works the second time. This exercise develops the ability to obtain knowledge intuitively, but you must make it a habit. This method really does work if you are able to stay detached and free yourself from the pendulum. This is not always easy, but later in the book you will discover new methods for dealing with pendulums. For now, we are just at the beginning of the transurfing technique. Are you feeling as if I have taken you by the hand and am leading you into a labyrinth? Stay free, even of those who preach to you of freedom. The suspended state. When you have disentangled yourself from the influence of destructive pendulums, you acquire a newfound freedom. But if you do not have a goal to focus on, you can find yourself hanging in a suspended state. When you have disentangled yourself from the influence of destructive pendulums, you acquire a newfound freedom, but if you do not have a goal to focus on, you can find yourself hanging in a suspended state. If you have neglected your goals 
because of a preoccupation with defeating the pendulums around you or stopping their sway, you may end up in a vacuum. On the one hand, conflicts and concerns that previously haunted you fade. Arguments occur less frequently. Anxiety and worry gradually disappear from your life and all without you really ever noticing it, like a storm that gradually calms and passes. This is all very positive, but you may discover a downside to this new state. Events that before had you at the center of things now carry on without you. You are no longer as important to other people around you as you used to be, and so they pay you less attention. You have fewer worries, but as yet no new desires have arisen to replace them. There is less pressure from the outside world, but that does not seem to be bringing you any dividends. You have fewer problems, but have not necessarily made any new achievements either. Why is that? The human environment is built entirely on pendulums. Therefore, when a person isolates themselves from these structures, they begin to find themselves in a kind of desert. The suspended state is therefore not much better than being dependent on pendulums. It is a bit like when children who have everything they could possibly want whine about the fact that there is nothing more to want. They are genuinely unhappy and drive everyone around them up the wall with their whining because it is human nature to need something to strive for. Your freedom lies in being free from the pendulums of others. There are pendulums, however, that can be of use to you, and these are your personal pendulums. It is essential to recognize the goals you have been conditioned to chase after, which in fact lead you further away from your lifeline of happiness. The task is then to remain free and choose those lifelines on which true success and happiness await you. Pendulums do not necessarily have to represent something detrimental as long as a person is self-aware. It is never possible to be completely free of pendulums. The question is how to avoid being oppressed by a pendulum's influence so that you can consciously work them in favor of your own purpose. Transurfing offers the specific tools needed to achieve this. Even though it is not possible to free yourself from the phenomenon of pendulums completely, it is not entirely necessary that you do so. On the contrary, at the end of the day, it is pendulums that turn dreams into reality. Summary. A pendulum is created by the energy of a group of people thinking in the same way. A pendulum is an energy-based information structure. A pendulum maintains the thought energy of the adherent at its own vibrational frequency. A harsh battle for adherence takes place between the pendulums. A destructive pendulum forces goals onto its adherents that are not of their own making. A pendulum plays on human emotion, thereby catching the individual in their web. If there is something that you really do not want, it will appear in your life. To free oneself from a pendulum means to give it no place in your life. To give something no place in your life does not mean to try and avoid it. It means to ignore it. To bring a pendulum to rest, you have to change the established game script. Positive visualization will gently bring the swing of a human pendulum to rest. The energy of a stilled pendulum becomes available to you. Problems are solved by defeating or stopping the pendulum that created them. To solve a problem, rent yourself out. To avoid getting stuck in a suspended state, find your own pendulums. It is essential to acquire the habit of remembering what you know.